so till now we have talked about the important parts of the cholera topic that is about the vibrio cholerae bacteria and the classification of the vibrios and the pathogenesis as well as the lab diagnosis and prevention and control of the cholera now we will uh, see few uh, short topics which may be asked as short notes or as short answer questions in the university exams and those uh, short topics are the halophilic vibrios and the even tour uh, uh, even tour uh, biotype of the vibrio cholerae as well as the classical biotype so the first we will start with the halophilic vibrios so i have talked about this uh, mean, meaning of the name of halophile so halo means halo means salt if you remember your chemistry then halo means salt and philly means affection that means salt affection that means the vibrios who are salt loving so those vibrios are called as the halophilic vibrios salt loving vibrios are called as the halophilic vibrios now what is the property of these halophilic vibrios the properties of these halophilic vibrios is that they cannot grow without salt because they are salt loving as you cannot uh, grow without uh, your love then uh, similarly the vibrios can also not grow without the salt okay that's the meaning of the love here. so and the optimum growth is at seven percent salt concentration and they can even grow at higher salt concentration it is unlike the non-halophilic vibrios uh, who or which cannot grow at higher salt concentration but here the halophilic vibrios can grow at very high salt concentration just like you you also never say no to higher amount of love okay you always want higher amount of love similarly the vibrios also never say no to higher amount of salt concentration that means so the salt is their love okay so by that you can remember the property of this halophilic vibrios now what is the example of the halophilic vibrios the example is vibrio parahemolyticus and the vibrio alginolyticus i have talked about it earlier as well now we will see about them individually so first coming to the vibrio parahemolyticus so vibrio parahemolyticus uh, causes infection when uh, when a person eats something from uh, from the sea origin like some crab or some fishes from the sea if someone eats then that contains the vibrio parahemolyticus bacilli because you know that the these vibrio parahemolyticus are salt loving so they will obviously be present in the salt water that is the sea water and as they are present in the sea water they will also be present in the organisms which are residing in the in that sea so whenever someone eats the sea fishes or sea crabs then there occurs the uh, there is higher chances of infection with the vibrio parahemolyticus okay so that's why they cause sea born gastroenteritis and gastroenteritis is similar to the vibrio cholerae that is they also cause the watery diarrhea rice water stool without mucus without blood okay okay other than gastroenteritis they can also call the they can also uh, cause vomiting okay so now coming to the lab diagnosis so lab diagnosis of vibrio parahemolyticus is important uh, uh, because there are many uh, mcqs question uh, there in the lab diagnosis of the vibrio parahemolyticus okay if you come to the direct detection then we see bipolar staining in case of the vibrio parahemolyticus what is the meaning of the bipolar staining suppose this is the bacteria then staining occurs at this point at one pole and then at the other pole so this is called as the bipolar staining okay and this is very characteristic for the vibrio parahemolyticus this is a very important mcq question again then we have the tcbs agar on the tcbs agar they produce green colored colonies how uh, and what is the type of colony that the vibrio cholerae produces so vibrio cholerae produces yellow colored colonies that is in direct contrast uh, with the vibrio parahemolyticus which produces green colored colonies so this is again is a very important mcq then on the blood agar these so swarming these so swarming what is the meaning of the swarming suppose if this is the culture media and you inoculate the vibrio parahemolyticus here okay you have inoculated the vibrio parahemolyticus on here on the blood agar so after inoculating it after incubating it for about one to two days you will see that there is a movement of the bacilli in this in this manner in towards the periphery okay uh, away from the margin of the 
away from the margin of the inoculation site so this is called as swarming why why is this so this is because the Vibrio paraimonoticus are motile bacilli so that's why they show the swarming and again this becomes a very important characteristic for the Vibrio paraimonoticus and hence becomes a very important point for MCQ as well now for identification you can use the Maldito for the vitic and for molecular methods uh, also can be used for diagnosis like PCR or the biofire film array out of these these uh, out of all these these three points these three points are very much important for mcq point of view okay now coming to the vibrio alkinolyticus coming to the vibrio alginolyticus so vibrio alginolyticus the clinical features in vibrio alginolyticus is that they cause infection of the ear and the eye and they also cause the wound infection and if we talk about, about the lab diagnosis they can be diagnosed with the malditoff and vitic they do not cause gastroenteritis this is an important point for vibrio alginolyticus okay they cause the infection of ear and the wound now coming to the next short topic that we have today is the event or biotype of the vibrio cholerae so event or biotype of vibrio cholerae is a biotype of vibrio ovon zero group we have seen that ovon zero group has been divided into uh, biotypes based on certain tastes and one of those biotypes is the event or biotype this has been known to cause the seventh pandemic of the cholera now how does it varies from the cl uh, classical biotype okay so you have to write this following four tests for uh, differentiating it from the classical biotype so uh, first is the beta hemolysis on the slip blood agar it shows positive results that means it causes beta hemolysis on the vp test is it is positive polymyxin b it is resistant and the group 4 bacteriophage susceptibility it is resistant to the, them as well so this is the uh, these are the following points so you have to write to differentiate it from the to differentiate it from the classical biotype next we have the serotype next we have the serotype okay so they uh, these biotypes are further classified into three serotypes both the classical biotype as well as the event or biotype both have been classified separately into three th serotypes and similar serotypes that is okawa inaba and hikojima how are they uh, differentiated so for their differentiation we have the agglutination test and uh, when they are agglutinated with the okawa antisera then it will be called as ogawa serotype if it is agglutinated by inaba antisera then it will be called as inaba serotype and if it is agglutinated by both okawa and inaba then it will be called as hikozima so hikozima is in agglutinated by both okawa and the inaba antisera okay next we have the pathogenesis pathogenesis is same we have seen the pathogenesis of the cholera how it uh, attaches to the epithelium how it releases the toxins and how those toxins activates and increases the amount of cyclic amp and that causes uh, inhibits the absorption of na plus and increases secretion of cl minus that increases initial in the lumen and leads to increased amount of osmolarity inside the lumen of the intestine causing uh, watery diarrhea so similar is the pathogenesis here also so you can write that previously discussed pathogenesis here as well now clinical features we have talked about the clinical manifestation in the vibrio cholerae chapter okay so same clinical features is seen here also because these are even turbotype is also a type serotype or uh, uh, sorry a biotype of vibrio cholerae so clinical feature obviously will be same and lab diagnosis is also same so if they ask about the short note of the event or biotype or the classical biotype then the answer will be the same I, even uh, if they ask this is a short note on event or biotype but even they ask you the classical biotype then you have to write that it is a biotype of vibrio cholerae one zero group it caused the, the first six pandemics here it is causing seventh pandemic but the classical biotype has caused the first sixth pandemics so here you have to write the they have caused first six pandemics of cholera then how it varies from even to biotype this test will be uh, just opposite for classical biotype like uh, beta hemolysis on sheep blood agar will be negative for classical biotype this will be negative this will be susceptible this will be susceptible so just opposite will be the classical biotype and similar to the 
similar to the event or biotype the the classical biotype also has the same three serotypes so this will be the same for classical biotype as well pathogenesis will be same for both event or and classical biotype the clinical feature will be same and the lab diagnosis will also be same for the event or biotype and the classical biotype so by that or in that way you can write the lab uh, sorry you can write this short note or this answer the short answer questions of the event or the classical biotype so this is all about the cholera now and uh, the topic of cholera comes to an end and uh, next we will see any other topic